Hi, so I'm Dr. Lin, also known as Dr. Quantum, and I'm here to share with you some of the essential fundamental features of the quantum field itself. It's not like we know, you know, the details to any extent. In, in a sense, you could say we're like babes in the woods when it comes to understanding the nature of the quantum field. But still, we know enough to be able to share some really fundamental features, and especially in relation to how that connects to our conscious function. So to begin with, we know that at the most fundamental level of pure energy, in a sense before most subatomic particles even form, that the quantum field seems to be composed of whirling vortices of energy. One vortice which whirls in one direction, known as the electron, and the other whirl which whirls in the opposite direction, known as the positron. So what happens is when the electron whirls in a way in which it condenses into a very minute sort of mini black hole point, it shifts direction and spins in the opposite direction as an electron. So essentially it's the same singular energy which is whirling in two different directions with two different charges. The electron has a negative charge and the positron has a positive charge. We also know that these two whirling fields seem to whirl in a differential to each other. In other words, the electron is probably whirling inward into an ever more micro-condensive space whereas the positron is whirling outward into an ever more expansive space. Part of what's fascinating is when they hit that condensive point where they shift direction, you have a, a moment point in the black hole, in the mini black hole, where it's actually neutral. This is probably the source of the neutrino, which is the m most minuscule uh, piece of fundamental quantum energy that we've been able to isolate so far. So here you have this whirling in opposite directions quantum field and in terms of this whirl you could notice that it looks like a figure eight which is interestingly enough the infinity sign. Beyond this what we know is that this quantum whirl EPOS field seems to whirl from any given single point in every direction, everywhere, simultaneously, instantaneously. In other words, it creates a what has been referred to in physics as a Bose-Einstein condensate or a quantum field that is everywhere simultaneously present instantaneously so that out of this field is what seems to form the basis for everything to constitute. Everything that manifests into form seems to come out of this singular most non-local field. So why is it interesting for consciousness? Well, my argument is that whenever we're most awake to our vital life force, whenever we're most open to our feeling and emotional nature, we're totally in an open space, you can actually experience this whirl inside of yourself in a very subtle way. It's known in many spiritual traditions as the subtle body. So another characteristic of it is, in terms of our most aware big mind space, when we are the most open to the quantum field, what we notice is that everything is interconnected with everything else. Everything we experience right under our nose, in as much as it's being constituted out of that singular field force, is actually interconnected. One of the favorite examples I like to use of this is like picture a tree. We all think we know what a tree is, right? <laughs> you know, it's a definable form and we can say that's a tree. But do you think that tree could exist without the nutrient and soil base within which it's planted? Do you think that tree could exist without the sun field, the rain, and the wind, and the various climatic changes that go on, right? Do you think that 
tree could even exist in another solar system without our sun? Do you suppose that particular form of tree could exist anywhere else in the whole universe? Cosmos? I don't know. But can you see how it's actually interconnected almost to infinity and beyond? And this is one of the natures of the quantum field itself. So in other words, this has to do with the rational, logical nature of our brain. When we start to experience the, the quantum interconnected nature of all things, it changes the way that we identify things entirely. In fact, it liberates our mind in, to what we refer to as big mind, the big space. To carry it a little bit further, a third dimension of the quantum field is that it seems to create a harmonic resonance, a hum. A hum that we can know in the most integral core of our being within our hearts in terms of a sensation of loving life. You know in those moments when you are, you've been most awake, most alive to life, most sensitively attuned to pure energy flowering all around you in the form of things, in those moments you can't but help but fall in love with life. So this is kind of the third characteristic of the quantum field, that it seems to hum with an underlying vibration that we experience within our own inner beings as love. And the most important thing of all is that when we are whole being attuned to the quantum field, we seem to become the most empowered to manifest our dreams. Whatever great intentions we set in front of ourselves, these are exactly the moments when we're most attuned that we begin to feel the most empowered, the most inspired to put our whole being behind our intentions in such a way as to go, yes, I want to manifest this dream. Cool.